Don't you love an extra $100 in your pocket? Have a TurboTax expert file your taxes for you by March 31st to get $100 back instantly. Because no matter what moves you made last year, TurboTax makes them count. That means getting $100 back and 100% accurate taxes only from Intuit TurboTax. Must file by 331. Credit only applicable to federal filing fees with TurboTax full service. Offer can be modified or terminated at any time. Hey, say you're in the market for a new car, but you don't want to step into the dealership and feel uncomfortable. Well, guess what? That's why there's True Car. With True Car, you'll see what other people in your local market paid for the car you want before you even step foot in the dealership. From there, you can connect with a local True Car certified dealer and enjoy a more confident car buying experience. Using True Car, you can easily find the car you want. Once you register, you'll see real pricing on actual inventory. This is competitive pricing offered to you only by a True Car certified dealer for an actual vehicle on their lot. It's pricing you'll see before going to their dealership so you can feel confident when you show up. You want to feel confident because if, if they smell weakness on you, you're dead. Right, Matt? They, they, they smell weakness on you, you're dead. It's like blood in the water. Blood in the water. True Car customers are more likely to enjoy a faster buying process when they connect with True Car certified dealers. True Car users can save an average of over $3,000 off MSRP. When you're ready to buy, visit True Car to enjoy a more confident car buying experience. And remember, take it from me, Spike. You're going to remember this experience every time you drive your new car, so you want it to be a good experience. True Car. Now, Podcast One brings you Spike's Car Radio, a downloadable cars and coffee, hosted by writer, comedian, and automotive enthusiast, Spike Ferriston, and recorded live from the porch of the famous Malibu Kitchen. Now, here's Spike. Hello, everybody. In a uh, minute, we're going to be on the porch in Malibu with none other than Jerry Seinfeld and the real Zuckerman, two of my buddies. Um, we sat out at Bill's this past weekend, and we just recorded our chat. We talked about everything from, well, mainly we just talked about Porsches. <laughs> so if you're a Porsche fan, I think you're going to like it. Before we go out there, I wanted to give you a little car matchmaker news. Car matchmaker news. Uh, and it's it's good news, I think. It's, it's kind of mixed good news. Car matchmaker is... Uh, Starting run on NBC Sports. That's right. NBC Sports, which is part of the NBC family that we were already a part of, has decided to uh, license the library of shows, seasons one through three, and will begin airing the shows October 1st after uh, the NASCAR Cup Series. Uh, We go on 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and uh, you can extrapolate from there, everybody. Um, We're going to be – it looks like – I'm looking at the rundown here. They're going to be running the shows in order as we made them. So Season 1, Episode 1, Muscle Car Showdown, uh, Superhero Car is the next one. Happy Wife, Happy Life. I didn't name these, by the way. I just – I'm just the guy in – the show and uh west hollywood boombox they're they're starting off october 1st which i believe is sunday with uh four of our episodes the first four and continuing throughout the month and i think into november airing the show now i know what you're thinking spike are they airing new episodes well let's get a lot of folks to watch this and uh i think we can make that that argument to the NBC Sports Network i i, I like uh NBC Sports Network i'm a huge fan of what they do I think it's a great home for the show. We'll see how the shows do, and hopefully uh, after this run this fall, um, we'll have some news about a season four. How about that? So watch Car Matchmaker on NBC Sports Network starting October 1st, 7 p.m. And now we go out to the Malibu Kitchen in lovely Malibu on the porch with myself, Jerry Seinfeld, and Paul Zuckerman mid-conversation. Today's show is about Paul Zuckerman, number one, erroneously and fallaciously <laughs> blaming me for not owning a 918 because he says I touted him off of it and then flipped, even though I flipped publicly. I'm happy to sue you and prove in court that you're at fault. So the mission today is to resell you on the 918, and for Dean, you're... Uh, Consigliere and uh, personal handler is going to find the car. I'm, and we're going to spec it today, too. I'm already sold on the 918. The problem is, is I'm not sold on the price. That's it. It just uh, has right, to be right. price Hold numbers. on, hold on. I, well, I, I, let me introduce the show here. Okay. If you've been listening, you've been listening to Jerry Seinfeld, Paul Zuckerman, 
our friend Dean Maroney from Auto Gallery. Is it even Auto Gallery anymore, Dean? It, for the moment, for the moment. And we're on the porch in Malibu. We call it Auto Gallery for the moment. It's Spike's Car Radio. This is the core group. We don't even have Will, the producer, with us. He booked a commercial. He booked a sit and sleep commercial. <laughs> but we, okay, let him stay with Larry. <laughs> so I'm recording this. I hope I do it right. And um, okay. we've left a chair open for you, the listener, and this is, this is what we're talking about today on a, on a beautiful Sunday. Well, let's start. You said you wanted to talk about the touring pack. That was what I was do. On this your is, mind. But if you want to lead with the 918, let's do that let's because we're in the middle it. of that. We'll build to it. Okay. The 918, that's going to be the big move. We're going to close with that. <laughs> Zuckerman's going to put his fist down. Why do I have like to? Like at the end of Moonstruck, he's going to slam the table. He's going to stand up like he's giving up his mistress to go... <laughs> Give me the 980. What was his name again? <laughs> Vincent Gardinia. He had such a face, huh? Yeah. Like a, like a hangdog face. Yeah. Well, their they're, cars have been ordered. The new GT3 out. We've just heard the news that there's going to be a Turing package with, that comes with a manual transmission. What else is in the Turing package, Dean? Go ahead and say it. You're not Mike, but tell me and I'll repeat it. Go ahead. There's two different packages. There's, so there's, there's but, an appearance package for the touring package. Right. An appearance package. And so it, essentially, your GT3 can look like a 911R. So if you weren't one of the lucky 918 guys to get a 911R, now you've got a better car that looks exactly like an R. And except, except it's not, not lighter. How much lighter is it? The R? Yes, than the new GT3. Oh, I, I, I can't get into that right now. But <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> now wait. It's lighter. <laughs> But here's the deal, Jerry. Porsche has decided to become a mass producer of limited production vehicles in order, in order to, in order to just rain on everyone's parade. Right. You guys, not no, to help us against you. Guys. Well, so that everybody understands, uh, Jerry's the only one who got a 911R. Paul and I were denied. Neither of us have them. And so. he talked because he talked me out of it. He basically fucked me out but of not my in the, 911R. But not in the very beginning. He did not. <laughs> you weren't offered a 911R. Because he talked me out of the 918. But well, we'll no, get to that later. In, 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 so yeah. I have one He's, position one day, another position another day, but you only choose the contrary one <laughs> because it assuages your guilt and your inability to, to, make, to step up. Yeah, and your, it's your, it was your fault, uh, and I prefer okay. to always make it simple like that. You All fucked right. me. I okay. <laughs> that, that's a very simple narrative. So now GT3s are being ordered now, this 991.2 variant. Both you and I, I think. I think there, a GT3 was on my text thread between me, you, and Jerry and Dean. Yes. Has been ordered. You got the Turing package. Yes. I got the Turing package. How do you, Jerry, how do you feel about this? Wake me when it's over. <laughs> the Touring package. So you're, you don't. Z, Z, Z. <laughs> I, I, what do I, oh, so you want a GT3, but the wing is too intimidating a look for you. To what is it? Too manly? No, we have anger that we didn't get the 911R. Move on! <laughs> it's over. You, you missed out. I didn't because no, now it's, it's back. I've, I, it's back. It's cheaper, and I've got something better. It is better. You got a better engine. You got that cup engine, which the R does not have. Right. Here's were, what the R does have. The letter R <laughs> on the grill. Uh, the we should rear stick it in his forehead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'd be so yeah. hard to buy that on uh, eBay. That what I like to see, $14 like R to see is, and stick and, and, it on there. I give Jerry credit for, for really pulling off a whole pose of superiority at this moment. But the market... <laughs> <laughs> the market is spoken, and the plummeting price. <laughs> oh, that's true. Let's, 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 let's modify that uh, verb a little bit. Plummet. Let, let's just call it leavening. <laughs> Unleavening. Because <laughs> I, I asked Dean earlier while we were waiting for you, where, where are the R's now? Are they plummeting? They're, they're, even, they're, they're not plummeting. What did a 911 R cost you new? 200? 185. And 185. then they went as high. I heard of one selling for 700,000, wow. and now the market's in the threes. I would call that a plummet in six months. Nobody Two. bought it at seven, and uh, nobody's selling it for three. I heard, my dear it's friend, these lawyers. I yeah, heard, so clever. my dear friend, that, that our friend C.J. C. J. Wilson, Wilson yes. he sold one for seven. And really? Yes. Wow. Okay. yes. Well, that was the absolute and I know that I know that uh, I know that Dean has one in the threes. Yes. 380. Right. It's but would you ever go ad- near that car? adjustment. <laughs> not a plummet. Not a stone falling. I, I, it's trying to grab the uh, butcher's knife. 
Well, it's falling to the C floor. Come on, it's, you're seven gonna get cut. You're gonna get for hurt. A car that stickers at 185 it was an absurd, idiotic. Right, uh, and that guy's uh, stupid. That was a black swan uh, moment. Well, this is why Porsche is brilliant. They came up with this solution that that fucks the guys who were preying on these speculators. Cars. Do we need the language? Screws the guys, the brokers, the speculators, and gives the people like Zuckerman and I the victims. Victims. The victims. And I love victimhood. They, they give us a car that's better and that's cheaper. Okay, great. So what's the problem? There's no problem. Then let's move on. Why do you go? <laughs> <laughs> he won't it's, give us a quarter. He, want, he wants to take. He acknowledges he wants it's the be, better car. He, he wants to be superior to us because I got the R. And the minute we want to counteract that, he wants to move on. I do uh, not acknowledge that it's a better car because, and speaking, if I can geek out a little bit here, with no uh, comedic inflections. Um, the R, which I'm the only one at this table that has driven. <laughs> because is I that own true? One. Yes. Wow. I guess I have. Is, as I wrote to the board of Porsche after oh. I received the car, and the email was read aloud at the Monday morning board meeting. Did you know that? <laughs> was, was it an accent? <laughs> <laughs> an um, the thing the that Jewish the comedian R has a letter to us. <laughs> Let us read it here. Oh, he thinks it up. he's so funny. <laughs> I could, I could pull it up. But, I'm, but essentially what I said was what makes this car so interesting and special and fantastic, you should only see Zuckerman's face right now, <laughs> is it's a unique formulation. <clears throat> We've all been – you've had – you you, mm -hmm. you own a 997 GT3 RS point one, right? You had one of those. Yes. Mm -hmm. You had the point two. Yes. Okay, you had the four O's. Yes. 991 GT3s. We, you have, you've had all these things. This thing, those things are all in progression. This thing, this dot is outside, completely outside of that tree of faster, better, easier to drive fast, all the track, all, all that track numbers, all that stuff fine Porsche has to do that they went for a different target they set a different target and hit it and what is that target you want to know it's the comfort a comfortable everyday driving experience with a with an RS capability mm -hmm. back That's, to a 73 hmm. RS uh, yeah I guess you'd say but the question remains is the new GT3 going to have that I say it won't even in the touring package. That's just, they're just taking off the wing. It's not going to have, the feel. It's still going to feel like a GT3, which is a great feel, but it's not the R. Right. But it's also not the latest, it, greatest thing that they're making. Great it's, so it's, it's on its decline. The R is declining to its, its uh, holding spot, don't you think? It's funny that we're, we're talking money or we're talking experience here. Experience. I mean, it, it, let's not be crass. It's about the experience. <laughs> Okay, he should ship it out. But now he's holding on to the fact that it's lighter, <laughs> which at the time we didn't think was light enough. God, right? It's not the lightness. <clears throat> Seriously, it's not the lightness. It's the feeling. It's the feeling of the clutch and the steering mm -hmm. and the stick and the, the way the suspension is calibrated. It's all super comfortable. Hmm. But, but firm enough to handle that output, that, that power. So it's, it's not... I'm telling you, you get out of that you get in a gt3 it's like there's there's no similarity what about the idea cars? of buying a 911r today zuckerman dean I has would, one okay i would be in at slightly over sticker when it gets to 250 yeah we can we can revisit <clears throat> this issue but All right. uh i think we're about a week away from that no, you gotta wait till it's the never magazines. gonna happen oh it's definitely gonna happen you gotta wait till the magazines get a hold of the gt3 touring and the r when they will compare them and then you'll see Ooh, that was gotta great. Wait for that. Ooh, That'll be a very interesting comparison. I do, yeah. like do want to watch that. Out of pepper. <laughs> it's going to be so similar. <laughs> like what? Picking fly shit out of pepper. <laughs> That's Let's it. take apart this 918 uh, controversy here. Because I don't recall this going down the way you re yeah. recall it going down, Mr. Very Zuckerman. Very convenient, though, the sequence of events as you recall it. Memory. Talk into yeah. that microphone, they Seinfeld. They can hear me. I they can't they hear you. Of course I've got Okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm always the hero of my story. <laughs> you, you, you can be the hero of your story. You. you can be the hero I of your I think, by the way, I think I'm complicit 
and helping you not buy it. He specifically talked me out of it. He said, he said, oh, this car is going to be. So some. what were you? What were you offered exactly? Oh, I was offered the deal of the century. All right, let's hear what there the deal of moment, the century is was, on the and there, and There's a reason that it's important that, to know that I was offered the deal of the century because there was a moment that everybody thought this car was a dud, including Jerry. And so there were other people who thought it was a dud. And the dealer, the dealership. Everybody at the dealership who was a principal of the dealership had their 918, and they were getting nervous. These principals were getting nervous that they would have to buy this Albatross, this this bad car. Really? Now, if you recall, now this you probably don't. In order to get a 918, you were offered it, and you had to put two hundred thousand dollars down. Yeah, and that's you, right. And then you had to buy the thing and pay cash. And one of the right. principals of the auto gallery said, "Mr. Zuckerman." You can have my car for a hundred thousand dollars, and we're going to arrange for you to finance it over ten years, and it would have been a very reasonable amount of money per month. And I and so in combination of what you now, said, I recall that number being twenty five thousand no, dollars a month. No, 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 it was like and five I, grand. I, it was a. It was what? It was like it was Porsche. What, well, hold on. Dean's telling Dean. Porsche, Porsche was You're not making, on mic, so we're never okay. going to hear that. Porsche but. is making a special Zuckerman deal, right? It was a special Zuckerman deal. It was a one-off deal. But what I was thought, the monthly payment? It, I thought because it you told me seventeen thousand dollars a month. Let me. Let me. <laughs> Only at this table however, is that a reasonable however, payment. However, this but, is but so wait, sad. Is the story is so. This is what I told him. It was a forty-eight month lease. And the residual was 50%. That so would have paid off a lot. Four, so $400,000. It would have been a... And now the car is worth... All right. Okay. There, there are very so, few people listening that think that's a reasonable deal. But yeah. continue. <laughs> okay. See, that's $70,000 a month, $100,000 down to just about everybody, including me, is insane. I don't remember the 17 number, and I don't, I'm not going to disagree. I thought it was more reasonable than that. In any event, between that— between By the way, I'm going to I'm going to judge this. Who's right in this? Okay. So you guys plead your cases, so, but Jan, so wait. far, I'm ruling in okay, favor so, of Mr. Uh, Seinfeld. I'm, I'm, no, I'm being very <laughs> forthright about this. Jerry, as, as somebody who I look up to yes. in his advice, mm -hmm. was negative on the car. The dealer, the, the I don't recall that. Yes, I was negative on the car because I thought a year the hybrid, before you bought it. I thought the hybrid aspect was a sop to the to the greenies that we can't come out with a car that's just faster and big horsepower because everybody driving them will get the finger from the socially conscious. The, uh, but the I, SJW. But I remember that. But, but Dean, what do you think of that gray Challenger over there? You like that? It's kind of a flat gray. Party yes, coat. It's pretty cool looking, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a cool car. Nice. So, so Jerry is as someone who I look up to, who I. Uh, but he said this before or after he had the car? Because I before, remember him saying it before, before he had the car. Well, I'm not going to buy this. He said it way this. before, and then it was followed up with the dealer trying to scuttle his own deal, and 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 trying to get out of his car and and pawn it off on right, me. It right, seemed like, okay. and then the that numbers, and then it all as a, in a constellation of things. I felt I was I was making the smart move by not getting it, and then. What, to my I surprise, was making the smart move by not yes. getting it. Yes, That's what I thought. continue. You think I'm, I surprised you? You did when you got the car. I didn't know you were getting it, so it was like, lo and behold, you got the car. I was like. I, so I was well, flabbergasted. That, I'm, I'm hazy on that. If that's, I'm hazy on that, this too. This is how Honor. I truly remember the story. <laughs> and, and, now, my talking point is, of course, is Jerry fucked me out of the car. <laughs> and, and that's something that after this moment of, of candor, I will go back to uh, to believing that you, it's your fault. I don't have it. And I lost a million dollars in the driving experience and everything. I like it to be your fault. I went to the technical uh, uh, event in New York about the 918 where they were going to tell you, because I still was waffling on the car. I went to a one-hour presentation by Melissa Wittick about the 918, and at the end of the hour, I, sa I raised, she said, do you have any questions? I raised my hand. I said, so it's a million dollars to get good gas mileage? Is that what we're, <laughs> <laughs> is that the idea of this project? <clears throat> That's kind of what I, the way I looked at it. Right. They keep telling you, oh, 93 miles to the gallon. It's $860,000. I thought it was crazy. On that basis, it is. Yeah, but, but, drive, and you're here but driving. the feel of the wheel seals the deal. Oh, 
that's what he says. That's very So good. did we mention that you're driving the 918 today? No, we didn't. We haven't I'm mentioned that. Today. You thought I was in the GT3, but I brought my 58 Speedster. So we have the biggest gap in kind of Porsche history today. And you can driving. post. You took that great picture. You can post that on your Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, I'll put that up. Fans can see it if they want to see the car. The car is the only dark blue metallic 918 that I've seen, I think. Uh, there might be a few more out there, but what you did is you took a lot of that fluorescent green off the car, right? right? What, yes. what did you take out of that car when you spec'd well, it? Well, the seatbelts had fluorescent green trim. The steering wheel has the 12 o'clock uh, leather marker in fluorescent green. So I made all that gray. Right. I made the interior, instead of Alcantara, I made it black leather. Yes. Because mm -hmm. I wanted it to feel like a real everyday car. What is your feeling about Alcantara? <laughs> I know there are some people who hate Alcantara. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> that guy. There's I love Alcantara. There's a video on the internet you haven't seen uh, is of a British guy. I sent it to Spike completely denouncing Alcantara. And he's very knowledgeable. And he shows you how this is the material of choice for the cheapest Chinese economy cars. It's one of the cheapest things you can buy and use as a car. It is fireproof, but it doesn't wear well, and it's extremely cheap. But it looks cool. So I, I've gone back to liking Alcantara. I like to think that it's some, how more special because they use it in race cars, but the fact is it's just cheap, crappy felt. With a great name. <laughs> yeah. Corinthian leather of the, yeah. of the 21st century. Right. They named yeah. it right. Well, it's Cordoba. an awesome car. All right, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with more Spikes Car Radio. HelloFresh is the meal kit delivery service that makes cooking more fun so you can focus on the whole experience, not just the final plate. Because let's be honest, cooking should be a memorable experience. Each week, HelloFresh creates new delicious recipes with step-by-step -step instructions designed to take around 30 minutes for everyone, from novices to seasoned home cooks short on time. I know it made me feel comfortable in the kitchen, and I'm sure it comes as no surprise. I'm no Mario Battaglia, but I'll tell you this, over the weekend... I had nothing to serve my two hungry boys, age 9 and 7. And suddenly, this package from HelloFresh presents itself. I opened it up. I made a couple cheeseburgers. Everything was in there right down to the ketchup. The ketchup was in there. The cheese, these unbelievably delicious buns. And they were the best cheeseburgers we've made in the house. HelloFresh employs two full-time registered dietitians on staff who review each recipe to ensure it's nutritionally balanced. Try getting a registered dietitian when you go to the grocery store. I've never seen one. Plus, HelloFresh delivers food to your doorstep in a recyclable, insulated box for free. And I'm telling you, when I opened this thing up, everything was cold right out of the fridge. And HelloFresh is now offering light summer meals and has just introduced breakfast options for less than $10 a meal. So what are you waiting for? Try out HelloFresh now and get $30 off your first week by visiting HelloFresh.com and entering promo code SPIKE30. SPIKE30, my name and my age. SPIKE30. I'm not kidding. You've got to try HelloFresh. And saving 30 bucks that's a pretty sweet deal to me. HelloFresh.com, promo code SPIKE30. What are you waiting for? Time to eat. Podcast One Sports presents Attack Each Day, the Harbaugh's podcast. Every Tuesday, you can hear Jack Harbaugh. We're going to attack this day with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. Jim Harbaugh. What the hell's going on around here? And JT Rogan share their stories from on and off the field. Past guests include John Harbaugh, ESPN's Adam Schefter, and Pardon My Takes, PFT, and Big Cat. So don't miss an episode of Attack Each Day, the Harbaugh's podcast. Every Tuesday, exclusive exclusively on podcast1.com and the new podcast 1 app just a sample of what's coming to podcast 1 sports you're listening to spike's car radio all right we're back with jerry paul dean's here and bill at the malibu kitchen What's uh, what's a nine eighteen going to cost Zuckerman right now if he were going to get in one it's what not going to cost me anything i'm not buying it i'm I, i'm not getting out of my position of blame well, and and resentment why, well, uh, why? Bitterness. Yes. The bitterness. Yes. Well, yeah, why? You, well, the reason I'm driving it today, first of all, is because I knew it would make Dean happy and you sad. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you've succeeded. Because <laughs> he hasn't seen it. But right. also because of the recent announcement that they're not going to be superseding this, uh, what we call super sports car, or some people call them hyper cars, mm -hmm. in, in the foreseeable future. So that car has just got even more special today. Yeah. That doesn't mean you <clears throat> you have to do without it. 
We can figure this out. It's so much money, and it oh, makes me money. so you're, crazy. You're not going to have any money in the end anyway. No. What uh, you're going to have is memories of a great car. As I said to Bruce Canepa, you can't drive money. <laughs> and, what did, and, and what did dear Bruce say? He said, I use that in my advertising. I said, go right ahead. <laughs> If you see a car you like, buy it. Yeah, I don't know. You won't remember the cash as you're heaving those phlegm-filled <laughs> breaths and the blood is coming out of your nose and you're going, that's it, I'm done. That happened yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I think with all of these cars, there's always a moment, even the 911R, there's always a moment where one gets put under your nose and then you buy it. There's no rush. They're not going anywhere. That's true. They're not. The, the guys die. The cars are the same. There's a and second, third, fourth chance with all this stuff. Yeah. It's always going to be for sale. And I've never been one of these guys who likes to be the... the some people really love first one on the, be the first one on your block. You know, right. that old... For extra ethic. money. I've yeah. never... Un, do you care about that? Do you like no, that? No, I always think that guy's the soccer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand that. You're yeah, I've never understood that line. Hey, so tell us, you just got a 914, right? 1975? Yes, a 1975 uh, 914 in summer yellow with a uh, tan interior, 1.8 liter... 3,000 original miles, new, 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 and I drove it around yesterday. What an incredible platform mm. that 914 was. You can tell was. right when you get in it. Like I had a 70, I think, or a 71 914.6 that this is a much more solid car. Yeah, really? Like right the steering it. wheel, yeah. That's something I didn't know. I didn't How know developed that either. It was. I thought of they were always developed. They, they always develop. They always develop. The seven, the nine fourteen six was a little not put together. It was a little uh, too much like a Volkswagen. It was. It was wispy. It was wispy, right, yeah. and rattly, yeah. and not not as together. Jerry's car, this new one, is really interesting. Do you think they were all this, or this is just an outlier? No, car? no, no. This is no, this is five years. This is what Porsche does best. They make it better and better and better. Right. And and this car. Remember how we lifted out the carpet in the back? In yeah. The rear deck and they in my car you had just a piece of carpet that gets all wrinkly and flimsy they put a pad in this car this right. car has a nice pad underneath yeah and the first thing you notice is that steering wheel this nice solid steering yes yeah, everything solid. but but hit the hit the bell when you want to change subjects that's a, that's the sound of a Rolex six two six three hitting the wind chimes that here. Very, very, on the nautical. Porch. very nautical. What but was the last year of the nine fourteen? Seventy six two point. Oh, this is the 1.8, so it's not the uh, it's after, if there's a, a little bit of a difference there. But I bought this obviously for the condition and the mileage. And what that was an the, interesting time in Porsche history. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the horsepower? Yeah. Well, there's a, Cadillac, there's a Cadillac converter light on the dash. Yeah. It goes cat, and there, we can't figure out what the other red light is. But just the EGR. idea that when your catalytic converter is kicking in, you got to be notified. No, when it wears that, out, you're going to put in a oh. new one. That doesn't seem like it deserves a light. Right. That's a prominent light for that. Yeah. But is it? Is this a car you can really drive and have a good time in, or is oh it? My God. Is it yeah. too slow? It's slow, but I'm not a I'm not a speed guy, despite my brand new 918. <laughs> <laughs> you so don't need that. Uh, I'm a VW guy. I love to drive a 912. Uh, I I like an underpowered car that you have to work hard to make go fast. I mm -hmm. find that to be a really fun experience. I, I know do how like to get that. a 918. We need to trade. What do you mean? I should take Jerry's 918. There's got to be something that I have. Oh, there's gotta really? Be, there's got to be several. something that you have. That's that, quite a car, my friend. Right? No, yeah, we, I don't. We, think that's, that would, would be something that. we can play games with. Well, well, he might well. loan it to you for for a weekend. Just drive it. Well, that's a nice suggestion. I drove it as we crossed over the break-in miles. Do you remember that? What's the break-in mileage? Two thousand. Two thousand. And yeah. I had it with one nine 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 on the ten with you. Yeah, that's and I was right. driving. Yeah, and he, and it clicked over, and he went, "All right, yeah. let it have it." <laughs> it was right up to nine thousand RPMs. Could, and if I take you for a drive in that car today. I'm telling you right now, it's over. Have I'm, you not, I'm not getting in. There's no <laughs> way. You've not driven it. I'm not, I've been in it, and I'm not going to drive it. You should. No. No, it's really no. fun. It's Look so at fun. how happy Dean is. He's yeah. smiling. <laughs> Dean knows the hook is set. <laughs> Wheel time leads to a sale. What's it called on a, a rod and reel when the a big game fishing, when they flip the thing and it just a ratchet, the ratchet mechanism? Yeah. yeah. A point. Dean just is flipped it, the ratchet. There's a point when the hook <laughs> sinks in, yeah. when it's it, in deep and it's not going to come out. And the line can't go out. <clears throat> you got to yeah. play. And then he's got to help. himself out of it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then, and then, and it's like, and Dean's, of course, he's got that little rubber fish, the fish club, to, right, the, right, to clobber me over the head with. You to know, when you get it. the fish on the boat and you don't want to get bit. You get right, so, right. Paul, what are you excited about? A uh, new. A Porsche stuff these days. What are you excited about? You want what I'm going to get that's new to me or or brand new? Brand new. This is a this is a funny question to ask me because I'm always more excited about what was than what is. I feel in a way that Porsche is playing me like I'm <laughs> like I'm a like I'm a clueless John and they're and they are hookers and pimps right <laughs> right they get they pull it out of me like stuffing out of an old bear just one little tuft at a time they constantly have something new I, somehow they managed to get us all excited about a gt2 rs which we were never excited about in the past right and now we all have to have it we all have well there's to have a reason it. for that because when the gt2 rs came you're right we weren't excited but then we saw what happened with that car it became exclusive, and suddenly it was worth a ton of dough. And, and not you just wish that. You had it. With this new version, they took a major step with this car. Seven hundred horsepower. Yes, come on, which will not be surpassed in my ever. opinion ever. Ever. It's going to go the other way. We're, we're going green. This is the end, as Gene Shepard said after the 1973 first uh, gasoline crisis. He said it's the cold gray dawn after the greatest party in the history of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> so you really that's think it. that car is that moment? This yes. is it. Yeah, and that's so, it. No, how, there'll be more faster cars, but they'll be hybrid. They'll how be brilliant hybrid. was it? And in the beginning, I didn't really care for it, but but re- releasing the, the first images with Forza, the video game, I thought was really stupid until I showed my kids that picture with the video game and the car there at the video game convention, and, I, and it made sense. It's brilliant. When it's you're big, you have move. to act small. When you're right. small, you act big. Wow. <laughs> well, I would say kids... But you see, they've got me, so I'm on the hook. I want a GT3. I want a GT2. I am... GT2 gonna, RS. Talk, you want yeah, the GT3 talking, Speedster. We're talking so much money. It is now earmarked to go to Dr. Engineer... Porsche company, we're going to be spending so much money in the Let's future. So I am a little bit as excited as I am about this GT2 and all these cars. I'm a little bit resentful that that hook is so deep that they've got me. I am a sucker. I hate being How a sucker. How would you prefer it? How would you like it to be that they make things you don't want? I don't know. I'm not saying that this is logical. I'm just no, saying. that there should be a break. I think you're right. There should be a no. two year break. No, there's no where time. we can just there's do no a joke. Come We're on, almost dead. give us a We're break. Almost dead. Let's, They've got let's... payroll. They've got overhead. They need my. But no, this should be. Too. You know what this should be? Uh, we've hit on something very. But this should be Game of Thrones. They should do a run, and they should take a year and a half off, right. and let us relax they for do. a little while. How long is a business to last GT two? Six years. No, but there's always something. By the time you get yes, your GT2 RS, the new 911's out. People it's come. getting hard. They know how to keep us panting oh, and salivating. You hey, you know what I want to talk about? Because I don't think people listening know about this little thing that goes on with the Porsche crazies. They have, every year, at least for the last couple of years since the 918, a special dinner up in Monterey for the 918 guys. Jerry, you never go. Or maybe no. you did go no, one year. No, I've never gone. I think and, it's and another way to play those guys as suckers and no, make but, them feel special. Is, yeah. Here's what's interesting. They're saying they don't really care for the VIP pr- program, but there's a special dinner for the guys. And this year they told them about two special cars. And then they said, well, don't tell anybody about it. Do you remember so this? What were the cars? Did you, did you hear anything? One was the Speedster. And yeah, we, we heard. You heard about it. We heard about it during the dinner. We were texting someone. <laughs> who so signed, <laughs> signed a confidentiality? Should we say who here? it is? So then, no, don't tell anybody. <laughs> don't get rid of our sources. We have sources everywhere. We're like the Russians. We will hear this. We will hear about what's going on. But during your meeting, Portia, we were getting intel. We were getting <laughs> intel, and you know that we were getting it. You don't care that we were getting it. So you, you heard about two cars. How do you keep a secret with 918 guys right, who are can. drinking uh, whiskey? Right. Right. You can't. That's yeah. right. I think the second, the other car was the, uh, the GT2 RS. They no, were just we talking about when it was rolling out. I think they yeah. revealed the Touring and the Speedster. Wasn't that what it was? Oh, right, right. The Touring Pack and the Did Speedster. Did they show any, any visuals? Well, that I don't, we don't know, know about that. Yeah, I don't know. We were we were at where were we? Oh, we you were we were, no, we were at the Aston Martin party where uh, they were charging. Dick for Ringo food. was about to sing a song. Remember, I, it was they a, kept yeah. saying they had someone here to sing, and I, I don't. We, that's when we all left. We were like, it "Why are we listening one, to a concert?" One hit wonder, and Aston Martin, to my surprise, was actually charging their guests. 
for fish and chips. <laughs> and, and I thought, oh, God, this doesn't bode well for, for the company. No, but they had the cool DB11s out there. Remember that beautiful, like, uh, Mexico blue or light blue DB11? Those I like cars that car. are so cool. The only yeah. thing, the, so the cool. thing that they do better than anybody else is the leather. Right. Brush leather does not smell like leather anymore. Right, and Aston right. Martin leather, God, how fragrant and wonderful that well, looks. Well, you know why? The Japanese do not like the smell of leather, so they make a different leather for Japan that has no smell. Are they Indian? I don't know. And, and then, what is it? I don't know. They just don't like it. But well, the uh, I've read that, and uh, not that that means anything. I mean, someone wrote it, which means nothing. I like what people say. I read a whole article on it. <laughs> so you finish the article. That's the, you want to give a, a compliment for finishing an article. Hey, I read a whole article. On it. I glanced at an article. <laughs> yeah. and what I, I skimmed the whole article. I don't I understand. It. I don't understand. And we're not going to get into what they do like. We've seen some of those videos. What okay. do you mean? I don't. I'm not talking about two girls in a cop. Well, we're talking about the talk. smell of leather. But I don't. But they, no, but they like no, that. No. But they don't like leather. But getting back, getting back to this, there's a there's a whole movement now to get rid of animal hides in cars. Oh, that really? I don't oh, know that on. I actually. Come on. I would. I don't care if I lose leather. Why do I need leather in it? Why do I need cow skin in there? Is it headed up by a guy named Al Cantera? <laughs> 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 it's like the Chick Fil A billboard. But it does, <laughs> did, uh, yeah, right. The leather seems Eat weird. I don't meat. know. So well, Aston Martin gave me. A DB11 for a week that I drove, and I really liked it. I'm not an Aston Martin guy, but I enjoyed my Aston Martin experience. It was a $225,000 car. I brought it by the hangar for you guys to have a look. Yeah, at. we were in it. Why? It, what? What is an Aston Martin guy? What? What's? What's? And we know what it, we, you described the Ferrari guy earlier, and that, that was a little brutal, maybe for public <laughs> consumption. We know the Porsche guys are geeky. What are the Aston Martin guys? Who are they? That's a good question. Those are guys who first and foremost like James Bond. They're 007. We all like James Bond. for They're looking for that gentleman's uh, spy experience in their life. So finance guys. Uh, You know, Sebastian Maniscalco, the comedian, was uh, messaging me on Facebook when he saw me in the car. He's very much into that car. Right. Now, he doesn't fall into that category. Super funny. It's a little fashion-y. Yeah, there's a little bit of a fashion element to the car. The East Coast right. shop. It's sharp. I noticed yeah. that Aston Martin, and I don't keep up with them, but I noticed at least in this Aston Martin, maybe six or seven years ago, all the switches were in the wrong place. At least the window switches were working like a normal car, like right. down for down, up for up. The seat adjustment was on the wrong side. Like I always intuitively reach to the left to adjust my seat. The Aston Martin are on the right. I, I don't like little things like that. It right. adds like a quick little level of what frustration. What do you think about But I dropped my kids off at school in it two days and wowed the elementary school line, and my kids liked it. Um, but I the sniper th- slit windshield. That yeah. Would've, that I would've, love yeah. that. Oh, you no, can't. you didn't like the cockpit feel of this car. But, well, here's the biggest thing that I noticed that I didn't know Aston Martin was doing. This car drives like a muscle car. So when you get in a Turbo S, you're in an engineered thing, rocket ship, that well doesn't developed. vibrate. This thing shimmies and shakes like an old muscle car. Wow. So you've got that look on the outside, but that feel, which I guess some people want, and it, it does it, deliver do there. Do you think that's intentional or, or a question of underdevelopment totally, funds? No, no, no. That's the question. Intentional. Totally intentional. Intentional. I've driven, yeah. I've driven other Aston Martins. This is a British muscle car. You even said it, Zuckerman. You said this is a British muscle car you see experience. see what that guy's well, doing? All right, He's got so an old movie camera on a modified speedster. Somebody just drove by. Oh, I know that guy, yeah. We've seen him around. Hold on. What do you think he's up to with that thing? Oh, that's the, uh, we've seen this guy. Back to oh, the future that's a guy. That's car, huh? Yeah, yes. yeah. It's not a Porsche engine. No, he's uh, part of the, a different kind of car club. Oh, right. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Aston Martin, I thought you did a good job with well, the car. I, I'm into it. I definitely, it. I like the looks of it. I like the, I like the muscular back, with the, the, the rear uh, quarter panels, the treatment, the, the, the slopes and the lines. But I would never be able to sit in that. The it would, it, I would, I was car sick in the parking yeah, lot. Yeah, you didn't the have the armored a good time car windshield was tough. Yeah. See, I like it, but it's, it's got this mirror in front of you that has gives you a good view out the back. So it, it, for me, it made up for that. I like the cockpit feel. I like the stereo. I liked, I could see there's a version of myself, a douchier version of myself, and I'm pretty douchey, but a much douchier version that would enjoy this car, and it would be a nice car to take out on a night. the Roxbury Spike. Yeah, I'm not going to travel in it, but it, it appeals to me, you know. The front end is the antithesis of. of what Jerry likes about a Porsche. 
Yeah. Right. Right. All right. Let's move on. Yes. Ding, ding the bell. Here we go. Everyone should know that Dollar Shave Club ships amazing razors for a few bucks. And if you don't know it by now, I've been a member for a while and I love my shave. What you might not know, I didn't, is that Dollar Shave Club also has products for pretty much everything else I need in the bathroom. Body wash, shampoo, hair gel, lip balm, everything. As soon as I heard Dollar Shave Club had stuff other than razors, I was sold. At the store, there are too many options. You can't tell the difference between any of them. Unless you're really bright. As soon as I heard Dollar Shave Club had stuff other than razors, I was in. I hate going to stores. You know, you have to deal with lots and lots of aisles. You have to ask questions. I hate asking the clerk questions. And even if you do get a clerk, they don't know the difference between anything, right? They're not exactly the brightest bulb. So Dollar Shave Club makes it easy and convenient for you to upgrade your shave and your bathroom. Now, you don't have to step foot in a store and get a high-quality shave and grooming products. We'll deliver them right to your door. Just like their razors, everything is super high-quality and left me looking and feeling amazing. From premium ingredients to sophisticated scents, Dollar Shave Club is changing the game. If you're like me and sick of the nonsense at the store, now's the time to try out Dollar Shave Club. For a limited time, DSC is basically giving away their starter set to new members. For only 5 bucks, this starter set features their executive razor and three trial-sized versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean. In your first box, you will receive their shave butter, body wash, and one wipe Charlie's butt wipes. Did he say butt wipes? Yes, he did, Mildred. You will also receive their executive razor, which includes their premium weighty handle and a full cassette of cartridges. After the first box, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. This offer is exclusively available at dollarshaveclub.com slash spike. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash spike. That's my name, Spike. Dollar Shave Club's high-quality products will have you covered from face to cheeks to... Butt cheeks, they wrote it, I'm saying it, but I believe in this product. There is no better time to try the club. You're listening to Spike's Car Radio. Zuckerman, what is the car you have that you would most like to sell right now? What's the car that's really in the bottom of the pyramid that needs to go? Open the underwear drawer. (laughs) Just just expose me here. Okay, well, what what is the easiest car? I have this crazy 78 Targa. Right. That was, and and, and for you guys, it's important. Set it up. Set it up. Set up the car. This is Peter Cetera of the band Chicago's and Targa. It, and right. This is a car you should never have bought, Zuckerman. You're better than this. You like slumming it. And this, in my opinion, is a slumlord car. But Some, you, he, you were somewhat replacing the 82 Targa that right. you sold me. This doesn't right. even come close. It doesn't come close. Doesn't but, come close. Right. but, and sometimes, as you know, Jerry, you just need to buy something. Yes, you need yes. to have that experience. Right. You, need, you to, need to control that, You need Zuckerman. to, re, what is it? You release the monetary pressure. You need yeah. to each off <laughs> Some of the press. Very relatable to yes, our audience. audience. So, they yeah, love they hearing that. So yes. <laughs> Two, you have too much money, and it's starting to <laughs> hurt. I'm kidding. Yeah, right, guys? <laughs> the folks at home know that. Uh, so this little Targa, it's a 78, and it's been hot-rodded. It's got, a, I think what they've done to it, they've lowered the front. They've put some bigger wheels on it. Shifter. They, they've, got, uh, they've got a short-throw broom handle That is shifter. pretty cool. I like they've that. They've got a straight uh, Flowmaster pipe on it. And I think they've <laughs> that done, sounds good. They've done something more aggressive. There's a more aggressive timing chain in it and a little bit of, uh, someone breathed on that engine. It's a and, hot rod. Yeah, and it's a sure. hot rod. And I actually think it is fun as hell. You drove it. It's who, fun as who, fuck. Who it sold it to? No, a guy by the name of Scott Grunfor, who is a Mercedes guy, and he restores gall wings, and he was he was doing something with a collection of very high-end cars, and this was the throwaway piece. Right. So I immediately thought, when I when I saw it, I said I called Zuckerman, and I said, look, we got to get rid of that car, even though you just bought it, and I know who will buy it is Piven, Jeremy Piven. If you remember <laughs> one of the first podcasts, we're still trying to find Piven a car. Um, and if you've got one, he's looking for something. Mm. He's finally taking my advice and looking in the 80s. Looking in the 80s, between 40 and 100,000 miles in traditional yeah, colors. Yeah, that's That's good. where he's at. If you, if you have you something like that, that message it to me. that I sent to you? I, I did not send him that silver target. You sent a silver target, but it's got a tail on it. 
He doesn't like that. He's not going to buy something with a tail. Why did you say traditional colors? That's the only point that was Because I know, I know what Piven's going to buy. Piven's at the very beginning That's of his Porsche car. thing. Uh, and, and I've run enough cars by him right now to know that color matters, can have tails, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The first Porsche is always right. silver. What car that we could sell him, this little uh, – but, but I want – you know, I'm going to go in with you on that car, this 87 911 that, that you found. It's Which silver one? and black. Jerry doesn't know about this. Tell Aww. me about it. This is a beautiful car. We could probably. We were keeping a secret. We were keeping a secret. Well, I let, forgot until I said it out this loud. This is great. Let's not. Piven will maybe sell that to him in a year, but it's a. That, tell him about the car. It's a beautiful okay. car. And it was at Autosport Designs, the Pete Pompanupolis guy. What? The Greek. The Greek. <laughs> and I, at one time I bought a car from him, and I swore it was the Greek cure that I was never, ever going to buy a car from that guy again yeah. uh, because I wasn't happy with what was delivered, uh, and it could have just been an accident. Maybe he's the greatest guy in the world. And then... Uh, <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> screwing Zuckerman, no, a lawyer? that's a mistake. Well, if, you're, if you're a dealer and you're listening, don't. Just don't. Don't even think about it. I've we had seen a very this. nice undo of the deal. Yeah. I yeah. said that I said that we're not going to really talk about about the facts of it. We're just going to decide to, you know, be be friends about it and pretend it was an accident and just he gets the car back, I get the money back and there's not going to be an argument. Do you see how sinister right. that sounds? Do you see how sinister that sounds? Yeah. That's scary to most people, Zuckerman, yeah. what you just said. I thought I was being friendly. I wasn't going to threaten him. <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to menace him. I wasn't going to say, I'm, I'm a, just do telling you, know you who I am? I'm on your side, man. I just would not mess with Zuckerman when it comes to a car sale. Okay, let's let's okay, hear so, more about this so silver car. So it's an 87. It's right. silver. G50. It's silver over black, and it has very low miles on it. Very low, ultra low, extremely oh, low, hyper low. low. It's like 20, 27. It's so low. It's it's low. driver That's miles. Low. 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 driver miles. It was mainly one owner for its entire life. All systems have been uh, are working. The air conditioning is blowing cold. It's been mod- it's been updated to the new air conditioning system. Right. It's just that kind of perfect Porsche from the 80s that we overlooked, yeah, yeah. that we, we turned our noses up at, and that is going to deliver that perfect Porsche driving experience. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. way, way better than the SC. Yeah. As much as I like the character of the SC, then you get into a 87 to 89 3.2 Carrera, forget about it. That's the refined, the ultimate refinement. And, I've, and I'm looking forward to having <clears throat> that to compare to the 88 Club Sports so I can really get into the difference oh, between well, this is a big the difference. two cars. This is a big difference. Big to us, <clears throat> unnoticeable to a normal person. But <laughs> this the, is a, yeah, it's just a little. It's a weight and it's a uh, responsiveness and it's just a, a just dialed in a little more focused. You, you can't really compare them, but it's it's a wonderful car to have. May is it is it uh, uh, too uh, a crash to ask the number on this car? No, not, not bad. There's a picture of it wow. right there. Wow! Right? Really it's nice. This is the car you're going to drive forever. Yeah, put that on the web on the Facebook page too. That's yeah, a good I'll put looking. this on somebody's Isn't Facebook it a great page. Looking car. I, it's I seem to recall that it's in the 70s, uh, seven, 70s. low 70s. Wow. Low 70s. That's, a, that's a big number. It, it can pair five years it ago. Is. That would have been in the 20s. Right? Yeah, yeah. It would have been in the 20s or 30s. But find another portion. If we if we go halfies on it. Yeah. What is that? 35. Right. And okay. now. You've got something beautiful, that the right colors that you're going to be able to sell right. whatever you want it. Silver sells. And we're going to be able to put 10,000 miles a piece on that car. It's I a killer. I love the idea of it. It's a killer. This will be my first 80s 911 myself. You'll never sell this car. Never. Really? Never. Because right. it's the end. It's the end of the story. Right. But when you go to the 964, it's the beginning of a new story, a different story. And I, tell people why they should buy this car. You know, a lot of people ask me all the time, where is the place to buy in the market right now? I say the 80s. I say there are 10 years of great cars. But tell them why they should listen to you. Well, the, the fun thing about the 911 story and the Porsche story, for that matter, yeah, that's going to work fine. Um, the big plate of food just dropped on the table here from is, Bill. Thank you, Bill. That's fine. They 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 took an idea, a, a bad idea, right. and and refused to not try and make it better. Let's put the engine in the wrong place so the handling is unmanageable, and just let's work on this horrible concept <laughs> forever. <laughs> I totally relate to that. Let's take a something that's uh, idiotic and and make it less idiotic. That's comedy to me. Anyway. So, and, so how, and basically, 
the 80s car is re directly relatable to the original 64. 63. Yes, so, you go from 64 to uh, 89, it's the same car, just better and better and better and better. Is there any better. other run that lasts that long in, in vehicle history? Uh, the VW Beetle, right. which went... Why wouldn't you extend that to the 993s, the last of the air-cooled, and make that because the Because it's a... You, it depends on how you want to look at it, but the 964, when you say it's 85 percent different, right? That's a different car then, right? It's okay. a different, different car. size, it's a great different car. suspension, yeah, a lot of them. yeah, yeah. The idea of one basic architecture and um, what, what's the word? It's it's because a, a 964 is still a you know a, a flat six rear engine car, but different suspensions it's just you could look underneath them and see all the similarities from 64 to 89 that's one run of development 25 years 25, 25 years one years. car no one has ever done it no one will ever do it again wow and that's w and you feel that when you get in that car you go right. man they have just figured everything out here so any anything are there any years in the 80s that you would stay away from well the best is 87 to 89 and why? you get the g50 uh, transmission. Clutch. That's a five-speed transmission. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. The G50 gearbox. And then 74, Zuckerman, 78 was the first year they really got that bad motor, right? Like 74 to 77 in the 911, they yeah. were terrible years. Yeah. But 78, they started on the path of... The SC. Yeah, and started a path of something that worked 84. and didn't, didn't it was explode. Something with the, with the 74 to 78 had a problem with the timing chain, had a problem with stud, the, the head studs, there were all sorts of things going Easily on. rectifiable, by the way. As in my 78, which runs right. so crazily, revs so fast. Is so fa Did you find that car fast, the 78? Target? Okay, what I love about your car is it was owned by the guy in Chicago, because <laughs> I love Chicago. I used to play the trumpet, so that wears off after about a minute and a half of driving it. I once it, It's too... I don't like early 911s that are all black. They're really hot. It doesn't show the lines of the car. How about how it drove? I, if Pita Cetera made these modifications himself, which, I doubt it. which by the way, when, when I test drove the car with Piven, he said, I know Pita Cetera's manager. I'm going to call him. I'm going to get the history on the car. So we will find that out. If he did that, I might be able to get behind it. it, it it's not something... You should own. I think it's something a kid in their twenties. I think Why? it's their he first like he's nine eleven. Fun with it. Because By the way, the conversation got started with what? What should you sell? And then yeah. you proceed to describe this car that sounds like a blast. No, this is the car you should sell for sure. That's I, the most I would sell. That. If, you, if you ask me, and you've been to my garage, right? What car? It, what car is the easiest one for me to sell? Right. Is okay. That, yeah, I get it. I would like to see sell? him right. spend all of his time in the club sport, all of his time in the Swedish ice racer, all yeah. of his time instead of these little cars that aren't quite right are become distraction cars, That's and a good then point you die and you don't drive your stuff. <laughs> That's a good you point. Die I, I'm, and you don't I'm, drive I'm your with stuff. that. I'll, I'll go down I'm, with that. Yeah. With that, we've done forty. Five minutes of chatting here. Wow. wow. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic. Is there anything you guys would like to add before we go? Drive safe. Drive if you're slow driving the right There have been lane. a lot of accidents lately. Oh, by the way, d d thank you for reminding me. I want to bring this up. I know you uh, cracked up another one of your cars by mistake. On, on, was it the same day I, I got hit in the Range Rover Sport? Well, the, the 964, you backed. You just did a little bumper damage there, right? Why do you got to bring up my failure? I don't have I, to. I can edit it all, out. That's all right. No, I don't mind. I was in a parking structure that had more poles. We've all done I, it. And I had an, an old man moment. And as I was <laughs> shifting from reverse to forward, I just rolled back and ever so slightly touched the bumper. And, a, and an egg-shaped <clears throat> piece of paint fell off. Uh, Who do you send that to to fix I took it right to Beverly Hills Porsche immediately. I did not want that car in my presence anymore. Like that. <laughs> I, went immediately I need my went. mistake gone. That's right. really and smart to do. Get it out and it done. Finish. All right, I can beat you on this one because I had an experience I've never had before. The babysitter backed into my Range Rover Sport and, and bashed in three panels and two lights on the passenger side reel 10 hours before I was leaving on a family trip to Newport Beach destroyed it i called you know anthony laner never heard anthony anthony wiener laner you know i know from exotic car okay zuckerman you know this guy he's worked for you carlos you, danger i heard that you were going into business with him i, I like this i'm going into business with him this is uh unless i'm gonna <coughs> no anthony laner at exotic car mobile anyway 
I, I called. Uh, Why would I be going into business with a detailer? My, uh, <laughs> my, he's not a, a detailer. John told me that uh, you were talking about. Anyway, doesn't doesn't fucking matter. All right, exotic car Jesus, mobile. The, the gratuitous swearing. Just well, get over it, Grandpa. This is the way the kids talk. Listen to listen in front of your kids. The kids. I'm going to edit this out. Doesn't <laughs> matter. Anyway, Anthony, uh, I called up Anthony per a friend of mine. This guy came to my driveway an hour after the accident. He said, uh, the three lights that are knocked out, two lights are knocked out on the shelf at Land Rover. I'm going to go pick them up right now. Bumpers hang off. He goes, I'm going to be able to put your car back together so you can take your trip. And he did. She's like the Pulp Fiction guy. I went out. Yeah. Up, guys. The cleaner. I went out wolf. to dinner. He's exactly like that. I went out to dinner. I came back. My truck was fixed. Mr. Wolf. Completely fixed. And I'm not exaggerating. The two parts of the bumper were hanging off the car and it was missing did parts. You give the, did you give her a beating? Did it give who? The babysitter? <laughs> babysitter. <laughs> who else am I talking about? Not your no. wife. No. I smiled, and then I paid for it. But I just want to say thank you, Anthony. It's an amazing job. When I came back from the weekend, he took the car and got rid of the scrapes and the dents, and uh, that was another day. Fantastic. Fantastic. How much was that? That was uh, $1,800 worth of damage that I paid him cash. But just to give you a little perspective, two um, garages I won't mention in uh, L.A., big garages, uh, the the closest I could get it in was four weeks. Wow, four weeks. How do they have that much business? How do they tell you come back in four weeks? Because everybody's on drugs and on their phone driving around. You know what I saw last <laughs> Sunday a week ago? Yeah, the that, motorcycle. The right. motorcycle. The yeah. motorcycle. Yeah. And that's motorcycle the thing accident. I'm going to tell you. Everybody needs to watch out for motorcyclists. But if you're on a motorcycle. If you're going to lane split, make sure it's the right place to do it, and make sure there's a reason to yeah. do it. Zuckerman was covered with blood helping this young girl. Who she was kind of sticking out of her leg. Horrible. Feet down oh the hillside towards the beach. I've never seen anything like yeah. that. Oof. The PCH is one of the most dangerous roads. If you're visiting us, if you're going to come out to Bills here in Malibu, two things: stay to the right. Don't don't still dick around in that left lane. That's right, Jerry. I said no, dick no, no. around. Stay to the left. No, stay to the right. Slow to the right. No. Slow to the right. Left. Pass on the left. And don't make any U-turns because oh, you're going to kill U-turns. someone. That's all we have, folks. We'll see you next week on Spike's Car Radio. Thanks for listening to Spike's Car Radio. Download new episodes every Wednesday on the Podcast One app or subscribe now at Apple Podcasts or PodcastOne.com.